Hello everyone and welcome back to Jacklet Educational Channel. So this is the part 12 for the unit wise complete syllabus wise preparation for the UGC Net Environmental Science exam and this will be the very important topic we will be discussing that is the hydrosphere. So yes we have discussed about the atmosphere in the previous videos and if you haven't checked the previous parts you can check the link given in the description below. So without much delay let's get started. So this subject is actually very important because the questions which will be coming in the exam and which has already come in the examination we will be simply touching those points so no need to go depth and we will only discuss whatever is important for the examination. So first of all what is hydrosphere so brief definition is that the total amount of water so jitna bhi water present hai on our planet including water which is on the surface of the earth which is inside the earth that is underground and the water which is also present in the air yes the droplets the evaporate water which are present in the air these things are also considered in the hydrosphere so that is the part which is comprising of the total amount of water on the planet next thing we should know that 97 percent around the water is concentrated in the oceans and three percent is only available as the fresh water and among them also there are certain categories so we'll be knowing the three percent fresh water is also subdivided into different categories in which maximum is concentrated in the glaciers and ice caps so you can see how much there is the water scarcity in our planet because among the three percent fresh water most of them is situated in the glaciers and ice caps and it is also one of the frequently asked question after that the water which is fresh is present in the groundwater form then followed by the inland lakes soil moisture atmosphere and followed by the rivers so this is also important kindly note it down and we should also know that from our school days we know that three by fourth of the total earth surface is covered with the water so three by fourth part jo hota hai wo water se comprise karta hai but you should know that in the northern hemisphere so if we see this as globe so the northern hemisphere part comprises three by fifth portion as water whereas the southern hemisphere constitute four by fifth portion as the water part so it is also important next thing is 57 percent of the total ocean lies into the southern hemisphere yes the oceans are present in both northern and southern hemisphere but in the southern hemisphere 57 percent that is the maximum percentage of ocean lies in the southern hemisphere so these are the important points let's move to the next slide so this is also important because the questions are coming from here this table is important kindly make this table in your notes so here we will know that how much volume of water is present in different categories different reservoirs of the earth's surface starting with the oceans the maximum part so 1370 that is in millions of cubic kilometers the volume of water is concentrated in oceans that constitute around 97 or it is more precisely 97.25 percent of the total water on the earth next coming to the ice caps and glaciers so that is comprising 29 cubic kilometers million cubic kilometers in volume which is comprising 2.05 percentage of the total water present on the earth next comes the deep groundwater which is 5.3 volume in millions of cubic meters followed by the shallow groundwater lakes soil moisture atmosphere rivers biosphere that means the water which is present in the living organisms so inside the body of the living organisms the biosphere region only 0.00004 percentage of the total water is present so if you calculate if you add all this it will be getting 100 percent obviously so total volume is 1408.7 million cubic kilometer of water that is also important this value 1408.7 so i hope you have noted down this table let's move to the next slide this slide we will know we knew that we have learned where is water present and what percentage it is present but what is the theory behind the origin of water so water aya kaha se so there are mostly two important theories behind the origin of water one is degasification theory one is comet theory so ek ek karke hum janenge so what is this degasification theory so there will be some gases involved yes in this theory it is telling that water vapor carbon dioxide carbon monoxide ch ammonia sulfur 
hydrochloric acid argon hydrogen came to earth that means these all compounds and what we are studying we will only know about water vapor which is our focus for this video so all these chemicals along with the water vapor when they came they came when the earth during the lava decalcified into water so how we will know what is this thing so with the help of this picture we will be knowing so let us assume this is the volcano so this lava erupted and the gases then they combined so as a result they form the clouds and when the cloud formed and it condensed then it created the water bodies throughout the earth as you can see this water that is the cloud is forming the water which is then fallen and this bed is full of water that is the showing the earth surface full of water so in this way this theory is telling that water is originated on our planet next thing is comet theory so what is this comet theory comet theory says that all of the earth's water came from the comets that collided with earth so what is this thing this thing is telling that let us assume this is our planet earth so when comets came and they collided with earth from different angles or with different velocities then that resulted into the formation of water on our planet so these are two important theories kindly note it down time for the next slide this is the important thing that is the zones of the ocean yes ocean is divided into different zones and question are asked from this so we'll know one by one first thing is that the uppermost portion is known as epipelagic zone which is known as the sunlight zone so note down all these things i'm repeatedly telling these things next thing is mesopelagic zone that is the twilight zone which is called as next is the bathypelagic zone that is known as the midnight zone next comes the abyssopelagic zone which is also known as the abyss so as you move down and down the name changes and these four things we will discuss in the upcoming videos but whatever i will tell you should note down and the last thing is that you should note down the one more zone is there that is hadal pelagic zone which is known as the trenches but now we will focus on these four things yes ye important things jo hai these are continental shelf continental slope continental rise and ocean basin which we are studying now so these three things we will know one by one because the questions are asked from these things so i will tell you the definition kindly note down first we will start with the continental shelf so we'll be looking that this looks like a shelf in which we will be keeping our books and other stuffs so it is like a shelf so that is called as continental shelf this is the portion of the continent that submerged in ocean in past so in past when the continent has submerged so this let us assume this is the part of the continent when it has submerged with the ocean this forms the continental shelf so write it down when the portion of the continent submerged in the ocean in past this forms the continental shelf now coming to the continental slope so you will see this is slope like so as you can see it is looking like a sigmoid slope sigmoid curve that's why its name is continental slope so what is this things for this you should write it is actually approximately 4 degree at the angle its depth lies from 200 to 3500 meter as you can see it is lying till 3500 meter approximately and the width the width varies for 20 km around it the width varies and its base is covered with the sediment so that we will know when we will be studying about the continental rise so it is telling that the base of the continental slope is filled with the what is filled with the sediments so if we are talking about the sediments let's move to the continental rise so continental rise is the thing or the portion why it is called rise because all the debris all the sediments are here saturated they are covered with the sediments and debris that's why it is in rise form so ye uplift ho ke rehta hai rise ho ke rehta hai isliye iska naam continental rise hai kyunki wahan pe debris sediments wahan pe deposit hote hain and the height and width varies from ocean to ocean but one more thing you should note down that the thickest continental rise is found in the bay of bengal yes you should write down bay of bengal ka jo hai continental rise is the thickest in the world now we will know about the other different important terminologies in the ocean and the sea related so let's move to this next slide so here are the terms i would request you once again note down all these things first we'll start with the oceanic ridges so what are oceanic ridges they are linear chain of mountains so mountains chain mein hota hai some mountains can be classified as the hydrothermal vents these vents or some will be having the the mouth 
they will release the smoke out mineral land and black water so they will release this black color smoke or water vapor hence they are called as black smokers yes linear chain of mountains are called as oceanic ridges and when these mountains are releasing black color mineral lead and black water vapor they are called as black smokers and this smoke is mostly comprising of sulfide minerals chalte hamare agle term ki taraf next term is abyssal hills so abyssal hills are present in the sea floor with the height less than 1 km so that is the peculiar characteristic height less than 1 km the hills which are present inside the sea so let us assume this is the sea उसके अंदर जो हिल्स होते हैं उसे कहते हैं एबिसल हिल्स सो व्हाट आर एबिसल प्लेन्स सो यू शुड मार्क दैट एबिसल हिल्स मींस हिल्स लेस देन वन किलोमीटर नॉट ऑल हिल्स आर कॉल्ड एज एबिसल हिल्स हिल्स इनसाइड द सी फ्लोर लेस देन वन किलोमीटर आर एबिसल हिल्स नेक्स्ट इज एबिसल प्लेन्स एबिसल प्लेन्स आर दीज आर द रीजन्स बियॉन्ड एट फिफ्टी किलोमीटर अप टू द स्टार्टिंग ऑफ एबिसल प्लेन्स स्ट्रक्चर्स आर कॉल्ड कॉन्टिनेंटल मार्जिन सो एबिसल प्लेन्स the structures which are found beyond the 850 km in the seas after that they are the starting point of the plain structure called as continental margin so where this abyssal plain ends continental margin starts next coming to the next term that is sea mount so what are the sea mounts so from word itself you can derive that inside the sea let us take an example this is the sea inside the sea where mountains are present they will be called as the sea mounts so they are the hills with height more than 1 km yes if it is one less than 1 km then we have studied they are called as abyssal hills if they are more than 1 km and inside the sea then we will call as sea mounts so there are very very minute difference note it down next coming to the guyots so what are these guyots so these guyots are the many of the sea mounts that are having the flat top so they are the specific kind of sea mounts because they are inside the sea they are more than 1 km but their top is flat shaped so as you can see they are flat shaped inside the sea and they are known as guyots next term is the trenches so what are these trenches they are the regions deeper than 6 km at base of the continental slope they are formed by converging of oceanic plates so when one oceanic plate converges or that means it comes towards the another plate then it makes the formation of trenches which is called as the trenches region where the oceanic plates converge or meet next coming to the final terminology which we'll be discussing in this video that is submarine canyons so what are the submarine canyons they are the marines or they are the structures which are present on the continental shelf and slope we have discussed what are continental shelf and slope so they are present there and the terminates into deep sea as fan shaped sediment load so this is the peculiar characteristic of submarine canyons so they are the type of the features which are present on the continental shelf or slope and they are fan shaped loaded with the sediment so they are mostly loaded with the sediments which are brought from the water from different sources and they are fan shaped the example i will give you is the great bahama so great bahama is the part of bahamas island which are the pile of the coral reefs so that is the example of submarine canyons which is having the fan shaped sediment load and present on the continental shelf and continental slope so i hope you have learned something new if you have doubt you can ask me in the comment section and one more thing i would like to remind you that we are having more than 250 videos on our channel you can go through all of them there are environmental chemistry there are numericals there are expected mcqs for each and every unit of the ugc net environmental science exam go through them they will be definitely helpful and very very important for the examination purpose and yes we are conducting every day daily quiz on our telegram group join them and we will be practicing every day unit wise we are doing so it will also boost of your confidence so see you guys in our next video and don't forget to subscribe the channel to get further updates